this great uh, uh, summit here in Rome. Mr. President, speaking about Somalia, we saw the agreement that the government of Ethiopia did with Somaliland about the harbor. Um, uh, what are the reasons that you believe stand behind this agreement? Why they did it? What may be the consequences? And how do you believe that your government could stop this from happening? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, Somalia and Ethiopia are uh, two neighboring countries. And uh, we are not neighbors by choice. We are neighbors by the, sorry, uh, brought by the eternal. We have 1,700 kilometers of border. This border is not marked. It's a provisional border. If you go to the map, you will see it's a cut cut. It's not a direct line. And uh, the, being a neighbors, we have a history of 600 years. That history was a very, very violent history. Jihad, crusade on both sides was led. But that chapter of history ended in 1990 when both the Ethiopian state and the Somali state collapsed. Siad Barre of Somalia and Mengistu Hale Mariam of Ethiopia, they ran away from the two countries and the two countries went into a civil war and then we came back. So we Somalis, when we reestablished the Third Republic, which is running Somalia today in 2000, our understanding was we closed that chapter. So we're going to open a new chapter of economic integration, new chapter of uh, borderless territories, new chapter of uh, uh, supporting each other. The Italian government has been supporting that initiative, the home economic integration initiative. And the Prime Minister Meloni, she came to Addis Ababa and we have a trilateral uh, meeting in Addis Ababa, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Italy. We've agreed that we will develop a joint infrastructure and the joint economic hub for both countries and for the rest of Africa as well. And the Prime Minister has promised that Italy will support that initiative and Italy will advocate that initiative within Europe as well. So it was good. Then we have a second meeting here in Rome again. So that was the, the, the environment that we have been working. That was the hope and that was the future we have been envisioning. Unfortunately, 1st January this year, this thing happened. Somaliland, yes, they claim that they break away from Somalia, but that was the case for the last 31 years. And no one country in the world has recognized Somaliland. No, IGAT has not recognized it. AU has not recognized it. The Arab League, which we are part, has not recognized it. And Ethiopia has not recognized it for 30 years. Out of blue, it just happened now. I cannot explain why, but there are a lot of speculations. Somalia is just turning the corner and coming back to its rightful position. So do it uh, before it become a strong country or again back to its position, maybe one of the ideas. Maybe other, other, other ideas. But what, I've, what I know is that Ethiopia has no capacity at all to build a naval base and a port and a corridor of uh, highways and terrain and all this. There must be a, a hidden hand behind this initiative, but it will come out. The government of Somalia, the, Republic of, the Federal Republic of Somalia has rejected the idea. We go into IGAT. IGAT has rejected the AU and the United Nations and the EU as well. All has rejected by respecting the international law, a sacrosanct principle that says the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of each member state has to be respected. That is where the situation is. We, and this is a time, you know, in 2006, when the Islamic Courts Union, a group of Islamists, took over many parts of Somalia. 
Ethiopia intervened to Somalia. They send 50,000 troops to Somalia and they go all the way to Mogadishu. Because of that intervention, these terrorist groups, extremist groups, they were within the Islamist groups, but they were not out and they were not prominent. Because of that intervention, now they got up and they took the old idea of jihad and all this, and then they also have uh, attracted the ultra-nationalists whom whenever they heard Ethiopia become so agitated. And that was uh, the biggest war that happened there. So again, things cool down. We have been uh, telling the people that there are these opportunities that we had. Now, again, in 2023, it was the year that we have degraded Al-Shabaab to the lowest level in its history of 16 years.